Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Martin Till. Great to have you with us. Harvest season is underway with 9% of corn and 6% of soybeans harvested according to the latest USDA Crop Progress Report. But before things really start ramping up in states like Wisconsin, now is the perfect time for that late summer field day. It's exactly what we had in Rochester, Wisconsin last week as the Watershed Protection Committee of Racine County hosted its annual field day featuring presentations from no-tillers Jim Studi and Rick Bieber. So Bieber actually made the trip out from north central South Dakota where he's been no-tilling for over four decades. And I thought one of the most interesting parts of his presentation was when he talked about how he measures yield and why he's not even a big fan of the word to begin with. There's too many times the word yield is, is used to scare farmers into purchasing stuff. You're gonna lose yield or you get greater yield, you get all this stuff. And yield is what pays the bills basically at the bank. You have to have so much yield against so many expenses to make it work. I understand all that, but on our farm, and I don't know what made me start this 30 some years ago, we started measuring things about bushels per inch of water that God gives us. We have no irrigation. So when we started this whole thing back in the 80s, we were at three and a half bushels of corn for every inch of water that we got. Today, with our system functioning the way it is, we're between between 10 and 12 for the last five years, pretty consistently there. And before that, we were at eight. The numbers just continue to rise for us, but it looks like we're gonna stabilize between 10 or 12 bushels per inch of water that we receive, which means we've increased by three to 400% our water use efficiency. And if we can give up the nutrients and maintain yield after it comes back three or four years later, we've actually increased our nutrient use efficiency by thousands percent. Bieber will also be speaking at the first ever Soul of the Soil Conference, which kicks off September 23rd in Cincinnati, Wisconsin. We have more information on that on notillfarmer.com. Back to Harvest Mania now. What's the weather going to look like in the coming months? Well, let's find out from BAM weather meteorologist, Brett Waltz. I think fall is mild overall. Early and late, there could be some cold shots east. Uh, I do think that there are plenty of dry stretches for harvest, especially across the southern half of the, uni the United States. Um, uh, again, I think the Ohio Valley is a spot that starts dry and could get wetter with time. Uh, but we'll need to watch for some drought expansion possible in the southern and the central plains. And then in terms of La Nina, we have to watch the orientation. If we set up those coldest waters more towards South America, it could allow fall to end on a colder note as a whole. And that was from a recent no-till farmer webinar. Brett also expects December to be the coldest winter month, according to his latest weather models, which change frequently, so we'll see what happens. Speaking of cold, a hockey player and associate editor McCain Vogel standing by with today's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. Vincennes, Indiana no-till living legend Ray McCormick has a unique and efficient way of seeding cover crops with his draper and air seeder. Here's the Conservation Ag Operator Fellow discussing some of the specs that make his setup so effective. All right, this is our draper, 35 foot wide John Deere draper platform. And this is our Gandhi air seeder. And this is one Gandhi made to go on heads. So it's electrically driven, so these paddles here spit out the seed electrically, so it's always at the same rate. So if you come to a real rough spot, you slow down and it'll put on more seed. But also, if it gets, if you start out cutting beans at two and a half mile an hour and end up at four mile an hour, you can slow it down or speed it up on a little wheel over there. And then right here is the Venturi's that pick up the seed. So this is hydraulically driven by a blower that's mounted up here. And so the seed runs out out of here and it hits right here and splays it out in a perfect umbrella. So on this spacing, you have perfect umbrella of seed. So that's one of the beauties of putting it on with the head is that you get this stand that looks more like grass in your yard than rows of cover crop and so your stand is always very uniform which allows you to pull back pull back and i'm doing it again this year pulling back the seeding rate because it is so accurate of putting it on that it's more it covers the ground completely 
Well, be sure to grab a copy of the upcoming November edition of No-Till Farmer's Conservation Tillage Guide, where you can read lots more about McCormick's equipment and his planting season as a whole. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thanks, McCain. So Ray's dealership, formerly known as Alliance Tractor, has a new name. It was acquired by Sloan Implement in July. And one of the first things that catches your eye when you pull up to Ray's dealership is this giant limited production S7 combine that they've been demoing for wheat growers this summer. So it has two large cameras on both sides of the cab to maximize harvest efficiency. Ryan Seeger gives us the scoop on the new technology. So the biggest thing that the customers will see on this is some of the new automation. Um, so it's got uh, where it's the combine's going to instead of being a reactive, this is going to be a proactive, where it's going to be using uh, satellite imagery, you know, taking of the crop, and then also it has cameras on here, so it's going to be able to uh, speed up and slow down the combine based upon what the crop conditions are. So a lot of this automation here we think is going to help a customer be more productive. So even some of our experienced operators will be excited to get this out here and see if they what type of productivity gains that they see as far as with this machine. And then on some of the bigger machines, you know, they'll see differences. They're going to the new 13.6 liter engine that's in the X9, some of the other combines, and we've seen a lot, lot better fuel efficiency. Seeger's team will continue demoing the combine this fall. Turning now to our No-Till Farmer email discussion group question of the week. We asked you, how are you getting the job done with today's extra wide 40 to 60 foot combine headers? Let's see what you said. No-Till legend Phil Needham says, Uniform distribution of residue across the header width is very important, especially in no-till for uniform soil warming and crop emergence. Most new combines struggle spreading residue wider than around 35 to 40 feet, and if they are cutting into a strong headwind or the residue is tough, it's often 30 feet or less. With 50 to 60 foot heads now on the market, combine manufacturers need to improve their residue spreading technologies if growers want uniform crop emergence. The other option is growers sticking with header widths no wider than the spread width of the combine. So if the combine spreads 40 feet, stay with a 40-foot head. North Dakota no-tiller Kelly Lozinski says, Went to smaller heads on combines in North Dakota, running 32 feet, Shelbourne Reynolds stripper heads now on as much as we can. Still have 40-foot flex heads, but they are too big to evenly spread straw, running Lexions with the powered tailboard on chopper. Chaff spreads pretty well, but chopper does not at 40 feet. 30-foot heads really work nice and spread very well, but they are getting hard to find as everyone seems to be buying the largest heads made. And Brian Ryberg checks in from Buffalo Lake, Minnesota. He says, we run 40-foot and 45-foot drapers on John Deere combines with power cast tailboards. If we feel we have excess straw or not spread well, we run a Salford vertical tillage with just wavy coulters to size and spread residue ahead of strip tilling with a Soil Warrior triple coulter rig. And wrapping things up with our video of the week, featuring the owner of Truax Company, Jim Truax. He'll be presented with the No-Till Innovator of the Year Award in the business category at the National No-Tillage Conference in Louisville, Kentucky in January. Our Mike Lesseter paid Jim a visit and asked him for his biggest takeaway from a career of no-till innovation. Probably just what tenacity, tenacity has gotten me. Whenever, whenever things have gotten rough going, you just uh, set back try to get a clear head and think through it and think where, where you can improve something and uh, further yourself and further the business and overcome the, the challenge, whether it's lack of sales, which we don't have now, we have very good sales, uh, to lack of equipment, uh, either you get people that can overcome it or buy machinery, but you just take one step at a time and don't get excited. Love it. Great stuff there from Jim. That'll do it for this episode. Shoot me an email if you have any story ideas or just want to say hello. I'd love to hear from you. My email is nnewman at lessermedia.com. Thanks so much for tuning in as always. We'll see you for our next episode October 4th. Have a great day. <music>